Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so today uh, is the uh, the last uh, week, the first day. Uh, so next week uh, we'll have the lecture final on the Thursday, uh, May seventh. Uh, start at uh, seven thirty. Um, so this week is the lab final test. Um, so just go to the canvas. On the on your scheduled lab day and time uh, to take the lab final. For the final, I emailed you. Uh, I think last week sometime uh, the study guide. Uh, on the study guide, I listed thirty topics. Yes, uh, so you can just focus on that thirty topics, which come from. 30 questions on those, uh, on those uh, practice questions for each chapter. Uh, so pretty much uh, uh, we have uh, three chapter exams. So exam one on chapter 14, 15, 16. Um, so each, uh, those exam, uh, I, I, I pick up like nine questions. Uh, so therefore nine times three, 27, then I used three questions from the practice question for chapter 13. Um, so I just uh, uh, see like one, que one student asked me the question, can we focus on those study guides? Yes. Uh, so all those uh, 30 questions on the final exam come from uh, that study guide. Uh, you don't have to really uh, worry about uh, something else, just study the study guide. All right, uh, any questions? Okay, so, uh, so in this chapter 13, we study solutions, and uh, solution obviously is a homogeneous mixture of uh, two or more components. And uh, you had to think about those solubilities. So in uh, CAM 113, we studied the solubility rule. Uh, we see something soluble in water, something insoluble in water. Uh, so whether something soluble or insoluble depend on some variables. Um, uh, who you are mixing and at what temperature and at what pressure and so on. So first, uh, let's see the solubility depend on uh, what you are mixing. So in this screen so far, we can see at the bottom, we have two vitamin, vitamin A and vitamin C. Let's examine their structures. So in vitamin A, you can see this part uh, is kind of uh, non-polar. So those uh, uh, white balls are H atom, and those uh, black balls are carbon atom, and this red ball are oxygen atom. So structurally, you can think about this vitamin A. Most of the part is non-polar. Okay, so this 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 part non-polar. Then there's only smaller parts which is polar and in particular this polar part can hydrogen bonding. So we studied that in CAM 113, chapter 11. 
So we can say this can hydrogen bonding to each other or can hydrogen bonding to water. So because vitamin A has such a large part, uh, most of the molecules are nonpolar, and only one polar group can interact with the water. So therefore, we can see vitamin A, vitamin A is insoluble in water, so therefore it was stored in fatty tissues, and you don't have to replace it on a daily basis. Compare with vitamin C, so in vitamin C, we have a lot of those oxygen and the hydrogen, which are pretty much O to H bond, and kind of hydrogen bonding to water. So there's also those, those groups, like oxygen to carbon uh, double bond or oxygen to carbon single bond, they can also interact strongly with H2O, so therefore, vitamin C is soluble in water. Uh, so in human bodies, uh, uh, they were dissolving water, so therefore they cannot really uh, store up, cannot store in the tissues, and you, you have to replace it uh, daily. Uh, vitamin C is very important, especially in this coronavirus uh, crisis. But that is very essential to fighting those virus. So make sure every day juice up is some of those vitamins. Okay, so this is uh, the solubility dependence depend on the nature of the substance that is dissolved in water or not dissolved in water. So another factor or another variable that affect our solubility is the pressure. That depends on our solute. Let's say our solvent is water. So solubility of the solid and liquid are not appreciably affected by pressure. But gas solubility is affected by pressure. Okay, now you tell me in this graph, I show you on this slide what you can conclude. What will be the conclusion you come for from this graph? Remember when you examine a graph, you want to see what are the axes and what are the pattern of those lines. So in this graph, our x-axis are the partial pressure our y-axis are the solubility. So we can think about this is our y-axis, and this is our x-axis. So usually you, the graph is two-dimensional, which means x and y coordinate. And we have quite a few gases. We have a helium gas, nitrogen gas, carbon monoxide, oxygen gas. Okay, so by exam this uh, graph, what do you what do you think? What what is the pattern? Anyone comment on this solubility and pressure graph? Like, as the pressure increases, the solubility increases too. Uh, yes, Tessa. So this. Uh, so this means the solubility uh, depends on directly or directly proportional to the partial pressure. So this uh, conclusion as uh, Tesla summarized is actually the Henry's law. Okay. So the solubility of gas, I just added this word last night, so the solubility is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above the solution. So mathematically, Henry's law can be written as S subscript G equals K times P subscript G. 
So when you have a, a formula or mathematical equation, you want to know what are those variables standing for. So SG standing for the molar solubility. Molar is another name for molarity. We learned that in chapter four in Chem 113. So that equals more over lead of the solution. And we are going to learn that more in today's lecture. So that is S of G. So what is K? So K is the Henry's law constant with a unit capital M per 80 amps. So this is capital M. Molar concentration is a capital M. What is the 80 amps? 80 m is the unit for the pressure for the gas pressure so then the last one will, will be the p of g so p of g is the partial pressure of the gas okay so di uh, um, diagrammatically or in graphically we have this three picture so we have this uh, Cylinder initially have those uh, uh, solution and gas, and then we push down this piston, and we increase the pressure. So as a result, when you increase the pressure, and you can see your solubility of the gas in the solution increases, uh, which is is kind of simple to observe. So let's see. At the beginning, we have the equilibrium, and at the initial equilibrium, so this is our initial equilibrium, the three gas particles in the solution. Okay. Now, if I increase the pressure, so this the new equilibrium. And in the new equilibrium, and we can see we have a six gas in the solution. So that tells us you increase the pressure, the solubility of your gas in the solution will increases directly. Right? Uh, so now if you use the Henry's law. If our initial solubility is three gas particles in solution, and our new equilibrium has six gas particles in solution, so what is your guess of uh, this pressure? Let's say this is PG initial, and then this PG final. Okay, so what is your what is your what what is your uh, what do you think this what do you what do you think of this uh, relation between this PG initial and PG final? We are assuming this is a Henry's law constant does not change with the pressure. Henry's law constant K only change with the nature of the gas and the temperature of our solution. So in this three diagram, we are assuming our temperature are the same. T, T, they are all the same temperature. So therefore K are the same. They have the same K, have the same K, have the same K. Now we can see from the picture, we have a six gas in your new equilibrium and you have a three gas in your initial equilibrium. So therefore, what do you think this PG final and uh, compare with our PG initial? So PG final equals how many of this PG initial? Okay, yes, uh, any comment? Is it two? Yep. Uh, is that Jose? 
Yeah. Okay, you got it. Okay. So that means if we double the price, the partial price of the gas, then our solubility or the number of gas particles in our solution also doubles. Now you know the answer for the uh, critical questions of last week. All right, uh, so once we know Hermes law, so obviously we can um, use it to some of those uh, calculations. So for this question is calculate the concentration of CO2 in a soft drink that is bottled with a partial pressure of CO2 of 4.080 M over the liquid at 25 degrees Celsius the Henry's law constant K for CO2 in water and uh, at this temperature is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2 uh, more over liter uh, per uh, over ATM. So this question, uh, you just use Henry's law. Uh, remember Henry's law is written as Initially, we write S G equals K times the pressure of G. Now we see G equals CO2 because we know the identity of our gas. Okay, so solubility will be the molarity or molar solubility. Okay, so if I give you the K and give you the partial pressure of the gas, then just substitute. So this is our given K with a unit. And this is the given partial pressure. So this is K and this is the pressure of CO2. Then see the condition, the ATM, ATM comes out. So what a level over the more over liters, and then you multiply those numbers and uh, use the right number of the sig figs. So therefore you get 0 0.14 more over liters, which can be written as 0 0.14 capital M. Okay, so now this is not a clear question. This is the review, okay? So as uh, we saw in the last, uh, the, the slide before, last slide, and as the host says, comment. So when you say if the number of gas particles in your solution doubles, which means the partial pressure of the gas doubles. And then oppositely you can say, uh, if you double the partial pressure of gas over liquid at constant temperature, what will happen? And in those other choice, the answer is G. Okay. So once you know the directly relationship between the uh, uh, gas molecular or, or atom in a liquid and the partial pressure, you can change this question in many different ways. So here we see double, okay? Or you can see half, or you can see triple, or you can see quadruple, eight times, 10 times. So that'll give you the same idea how many of those gas molecules will be in the liquid with the new pressure. Right? So what is the number if I half or reduce the partial pressure to half? It's gonna half? The same, yeah, Dharma, the same answer. <laughs> what about the I triple? Triple the pressure. It triples. It triples. If I have a quadruple four times, it's four times, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is Henry's law. 
Okay, so this is not a clear question. So later on, I will give you the clear question and, uh, oh, I did not activate it yet. So just uh, hold on for a while. By the end of today's lecture, I will show the question that I will go activate the question. And uh, so today I, I'm going to increase uh, how much point you can get. I will say if you get it right, you get a four point. And if you don't get it right, you will get a two point. Okay, so we examined the solubility of gas in solvent. So we first say the nature of the sol uh, solvent and the solute. Uh, secondly, we see the pressure. Now see, we see third is the temperature, okay? You can see this temperature solute, uh, the, the, the dependence of our solute uh, on temperature is kind of complicated. Why? Because you can see on the right side of this screen, you can see we have two graphs. So the, the, the graph at the bottom is about this gas. And that's kind of simple. You can see the solubility is our y-axis, and then this is temperature. So as the temperature increases, what happens to the solubility of the gases? So as solubility increases, the gases go decrease? Uh, the, the temperature, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Robert. So there, obviously, let's say you can see if the temperature increases, then solubility decreases. So if the solubility increases, your temperature decreases. So that's kind of, uh, uh, so go this way. Okay, so as the temperature increases, our solubility decreases for all those gases. Okay, so that's the conclusion you get from the bottom graph. Okay, so let's see the top graph. The top graph, x axis, y axis are the same. So solubility and temperature. What do you think all those compounds, like angle A, angle three, CaCl2, PbNO3, two, KNO3, and so on? What are their states for all those substances here? Now, one something I can say is all the substances is ionic, right? They all have metal and some of the non metals ionic compound. So what are, what are the usual state for the ionic compound? What are the state? Are they solid, liquid, or gas? Solid. Solid. Okay. So then you can see for the solid, uh, for the solid ionic compound, the solubility dependence on the temperature is kind of complicated. So what do you see? Some of those uh, solid ionic compound solubility with the increasing temperature, the solubility for most of them is going what? Going up or going down? Go down and some go up. Uh, for 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 most of them, as the temperature goes up, the uh, as the temperature goes up, they also goes up, right? And some of them goes up very quick. For example, this one go up very quick as T as time increases. And for this one, it so kind of goes up like very slowly, like an NECL, the type of salt. Are there any exception for the solid when the temperature increases? What happened to this one, solubility? Solubility goes down, okay? As Temperature goes up. So this hair goes this way. So this is temperature goes up. 
Right, so then summarize for most solid as temperature increases, solubility increases. However, clearly, it is not always true. Some increases greatly, some remain relatively constant, and others decreases. Uh, for all gases, as temperature increases, solubility decreases. So therefore, cold river have higher oxygen content than warm rivers. If you like to go like fishing, sometimes go to a river or go to uh, a lake. And uh, you you had to think about uh, what time uh, go to what spot. Well, obviously there are some other factors. You, know, you probably go by the entrance of a, a of, of a, a, a stream or river into a lake because there uh, water flow and it will carry in some of those uh, debris, some nutrition for the fish. And also depend on the day, maybe in the morning, in the evening, the temperature uh, will affect the behavior of the fish. All right, uh, so now we are going to study different units of uh, solution concentrations. We have discussed the solubility and the solution qualitatively. So we say saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. Now quantitatively, we'll give specific amounts of solute and solvent to the solutions. So we'll say commonly, there are many, many different uh, units for solution concentrations. And um, even though those units for the concentration are different, uh, when something is common for all those units of concentration is the concentration is actually a ratio between two something, okay, usually between uh, the solute and the solution or between the solute and the solvent. So here is the list of uh, con units of concentrations. So the first one is the mass percent. I think that's not strange to you, and you saw that many times before. But I'm going to study that in a little bit more details. Uh, second one is part per million TPA. So this is for relatively diluted solution. Then you have this parts per billion TPB for even more diluted solutions. Then you have the more fraction. Then we'll study the review the molarity. We, we have that uh, before in CAM 113, capital four. Then we have our molarity. So let's first study the mass percent. Percent means out of 100. You take the ratio, like I said, when something in common for all those units, the ratio. Okay. Now for this ratio, is the ratio of the mass of the solute to the total solution mass. And then you times 100. So therefore, uh, you have this formula for calculate mass percent of a component. The component, uh, maybe uh, the solvent or the solute, and usually will be the solute. Uh, sometimes you have more than one solute. So therefore you can see the mass percent of one solute. Okay, so the next two is PPM, PPB. Uh, used for very diluted solution. It's still related, I just added those uh, words, still related to the ratio of mass of solute to the total mass of the solution.
Okay, so since percent is out of 100, so we multiplied the ratio by 100, then you can guess. So what do you multiply the ratio by for the PPM? M means meaning. So if it's a percent, percent means 100, you multiply the ratio by 100. So what is the number you are going to use to multiply the ratio if you want to calculate calculate the PPM? Would you multiply it by a million? By a million, okay. okay. So similarly, if you want to calculate the PPB, you multiply the ratio by what? 10 to the eighth, or 10 to the ninth. Yeah, a billion and 10 to the ninth. Okay. Uh, so that's how we calculate uh, PPB, PPM, and mass percent. Okay, so therefore the next question, the practice question here is to calculate, uh, let's say for part A is the mass percent. Okay, so we have a solution, let's say is the glucose in water. So this will be our solute. And water is our solvent. Okay, so you want to calculate uh, the mass percent, you want to find out the ratio, right? And then times that ratio by 100. So what is the ratio? What is the ratio we talk about? It is the ratio of the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution. So in this solution, we have two components. We have our glucose, we have our water. Okay, so therefore the mass of a solution should be the mass of the water plus mass of the, of the glucose. Now, because they have a different units, so why the given in gram? So this is one unit, okay? the other one in the kilogram. So you cannot add in them directly. So you can convert either both of them to kilogram or convert uh, both of them into gram. So I choose to convert uh, both of them into gram. So the other one already in gram, 13.5 grams, so you leave that alone. So what do you do? You have to convert this 0 0.100 kilogram of water to grams by using this, uh, I do this conversion. So let's say we have a 0 0.100 kg. And if you have something, or you can write it as over one. Now we know one kg is 1,000 g. So we cross out the kg. So therefore we have 100 point gram. Okay. So therefore uh, you, want, you want to find out this ratio and then times 100. So this is the ratio I said uh, we talked about on the last slide. Okay, so so for this uh, ratio, which means mass of the glucose, 13.5, then divided by 13.5 plus 100. Okay. So where does this 100 come from? This 100 come from the percent, this 100. No, right? So this 100 come from this conversion here. Okay. So this 100 here, is gram of the solvent. Okay, so this 100 is from 
our percent. If you want to calculate the percent, you multiply your ratio by 100. If you want to calculate the PPM, you multiply this ratio by million. Okay, uh, so similarly for the second part of this question, um, so we have uh, 2.5 gram sample of groundwater was found to contain 5.4 microgram of zinc 2 plus. What is the concentration of zinc 2 plus ion in part per million? Okay, so big, this solution is very diluted. You have 2.5 gram and only 5.4 microgram. So therefore you don't use a percent. You can still use a percent, but your percent will be a very, very small number. So therefore not convenient. So therefore we're gonna use a part per million. So you wanna find the ratio. Uh, okay, so to find the ratio. of the mass or masses so you want to convert them into the same unit okay so to convert a 5.4 microgram to gram you use uh, this prefix micro is 10 to the negative six okay so therefore you have this equation once you have this equation you do the conversion in 5.4 microgram equals 10 to the negative six gram over one microgram. You want to you want to put it in this way because you want to cancel out the microgram with the microgram to get the gram. So therefore, you have 5.4 times 10 to the negative six gram. So this is our uh, gram of our solute or the calcium two plus ion, which is I put in the uh, parentheses, which I will be our salute. So salute. So next, you want to find out the ratio, the mass of the salute to mass of the solution. So this is the ratio. Okay. So technically, or mathematically, what will the mass of our solution? Mass of a solution equal to what? So, so precisely, mass of a solution. So I abbreviate so this solution. So e cross mass of solute or solutes, depending on how many solutes you have, plus mass of solvent right and for this particular program so what is our mass of the solute we only have one solute 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6 then plus what is the mass of our solvent 2.5 So you still have 2.5, but this number is so small. So 5.4 times 1 to 6 is so small. So therefore, you, you add it, you still get 2.5, okay? Therefore, don't be surprised, you can see the next uh, line. We still are using this, 2.5, okay? Uh, we did not forget, we did not forget to add in this, but that is too, so small, so therefore, we still have 2.5. Right, so therefore you take 5.4 times 10 to the negative six divided by 2.5. So the number, if you if you do that, you will get a number about 2.2 times 10 to the negative six. And so therefore you want to have a number conveniently, you times this one million.
Dr. Wang. Yeah. Why does it say 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6 plus 2.5? Oh, because this is a precisely, you will see the mass of a solution. Or accurately. Accurately, oh, yeah. So what? So, so because it's 10 to the negative 6 power, we just uh, discard it? Like yes. A big yeah. 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 Okay, so this number, uh, good question. Uh, so this number, okay. If you add, if you add, that means you get 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6 plus 2.5. So therefore you get 2.5 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 5, 4, then it still has 2.5. Okay, so therefore we, we, we use 2.5. Okay, any other comment or questions? Okay, so next uh, unit is uh, more fractions. So let's see, what is the definition of more fraction? The fraction is the ratio. That I said, all those units is a ratio. So more fraction is the ratio of moles of a substance to the total number of moles in a solution. The more fraction can be for solutes or for the solvent. Okay? More fraction has a unit because uh, moles in the numerator and in the denominator cancel out. So we'll see uh, example pretty soon, and that example very important. How you calculate more fractions? Okay, so more fraction of a component. So this component maybe solute or you can also calculate the more fraction of your solvent. So just make sure uh, the denominator should be the total more of all components, which means more of uh, solute or solutes. Usually we'll see just one solute plus more of solvent. That what, what we mean by total more. So if you have a, a one solute, you see more of a solute plus more of a solvent. If you have two solutes, so more of a solute one plus more of a solute two plus more of the solvent. All right, uh, uh, we will do the calculation for the more fraction zone, but we'll first finish this definition for all those units. Uh, so now these two units is a molarity, molarity. As you see here, be careful with your pine man shape. So this only differs by this L here and this R here. Uh, so usually we use capital M for molarity, use little m for molarity. Okay, so molarity was discussed in table four as moles of Solute per, per liter of a solution. So, therefore, mathematically, molarity equal more of a solute divided by liter of a solution. So, typically, you, you know, sometimes you just write more over liter, but you know this liter means liter of a solution. Uh, so, molality is more of a solute per kilogram of a solvent. So, see the difference here? Now, I use highlight. To emphasize the difference between between solution, solutions, everything together. So 
solution means you have a solute plus solvent. And here, for this molality, you only see per kilogram of the solvent. So be very careful with those definitions. Yeah, here we go. We will calculate this very important example. So a commercial bleach solution contain 3.62% by mass of uh, sodium hypochlorite, uh, NaOCl in water. Calculate uh, A, the more fraction, and B, the molality of NaOCl in the solution. Okay, I did not write up. I had to. We had to write here. So to do this program, uh, you need to know that for, for the first part, you want to see the more fraction. So you have to find the more for both our solute and the solvent. So therefore, you need the more mass of both of them. Uh, because right now, give them uh, a percent by mass. Okay, so obviously you remember to find out more of something, you need the molar mass of something. So therefore we'll say what is the molar mass of NaOCl? So we have one Na, one O, one Cl, the mass, the molar mass for Na from the periodic table is 22.99. And then for oxygen, 16.00 for CL chlorine, 35.45. Adding multiply all by one, so we have 74.44 gram per mole. And obviously we have water, okay? Uh, so water is our solvent. And you have to also need to know what is the molar mass of H2O. So we can see how a 2H, so two times the molar mass of hydrogen. So from the period table, you find out 1.01. Then we have one oxygen, 16.00 again. So get 18.02 gram per mole. Okay, so then next, what do you do? Uh, you assuming how much you have. Okay, because all those uh, unit for the concentration is a ratio. So for how much you assume it doesn't matter. Conveniently, you assume 100 gram because this gives you the mass percent. So if you have, if you assume 100 gram of a sample, you can say your, your calculation becomes simple. So we take a 100 G sample. Then we use our percent by mass. So we see 100 gram sample has 3.62 gram NaOCl. Okay. So this fraction uh, comes from our given information. Like this. So this fraction, this is from that. Right. So then you just uh, see the cancellation, the gram example cancel out. So we get 3.62 gram NaOCl. Okay, so after we assume we have 100 gram of sample, then we know in this 100 gram sample, we have a 3.62 gram of NaOCl. So now the question is in this 100 gram sample, How much water do we have? How much solvent do we have? Uh, 
Okay, any comment? How do we find out how much gram of water in 100 gram of example? If we know our example has NaOCl and also has water. So how you find out gram of water? Could we multiply the molar mass of water by 3.62% and then add the solute? Uh, let's see. We have our example, right? Our example has, let me, let me draw a picture here. So our example here. So our example, let's see, I divide them like that. So one part is a so, uh, this is diagram, obviously, it's the solution to make it together. Okay? Now, here you have this angle. OCL. So all together 100. Now this NaOCL is 3.62. So how you find out the mass of H2O? Oh, you multiply it by the 100 minus 3.62 percent. Okay. Yeah, so you just take, a, I want to see the minus 100 minus 3.62. That will give you 96. 0.38 gram of H2O. Okay, so we have two components. We have uh, this solute, we have this water. Now we know both of them are gram. So we want to find the mole fraction. You just have to find out what are their moles. Okay, so we'll start with our solute. We have a 3.62 gram of uh, NaOCl. You still remember how you find out uh, morals from the gram. What do you use to find the find the moral from the gram? Right? So this guy. What is this guy? More mass. Okay, so you get zero point zero. 486 more of NaOCl. Okay, any questions? Okay, so next slide, we are going to find out more of water. So we have 196.38 gram of H2O. Uh, and then the molar mass of H2O is 18.02 gram for one mole. Okay, 5.349, 3.49 more of H2O. Okay, so now you can see more fraction of NaOCl equals more of uh, NaOCl plus, I uh, mean, divided by more of NaOCl plus more. Plus more of H2O. So then we plug those numbers in. So we find out our more of uh, NaOCl is uh, 0 0.0486. So divided by 0 0.0486 plus the more of water is 5.349. You don't have to multiply by anything, just take the more of the NOCL plus uh, divided by more of these two plus, then get the number which is uh, more fraction. Okay, so that's the part A. Any questions? So part B, you want to find out uh, more 
of uh, NaOCl, so by definition, equals more of uh, NaOCl divided by a kilogram of what? Of water, okay? So water is our solvent. But here, a kilogram of solvent. All right, um, so you already find out you have 96.38 gram of uh, H2O. Let's do a conversion. So here we need a kilogram. So you know how to convert from gram to kilogram. So I have 0 0.09638. Kilogram. Okay. So now here we continue. We from part A we find out more of NaOCl. So 0 0.04866 gram. Divided by 0 0.09638. So 0 0.505. We use abbreviation little m. Okay, so this is a very important example, and it uh, shows us how to calculate more fraction in part A and how you calculate molality in part B. All right, any questions? So that's just uh, the solvent over solute, not over solution. The 0 0.09638, that's not the solution, that's the sol solute. Uh, the, the solvent. Yeah. Yeah, got it, yeah. So that's very precise. So when you calculate this little n, or the molality, you use a kilogram of the solvent. Okay. Yeah, good comment, Zorman. All right, um, so just if you compare our molarity, the capital M with the little m, and uh, you will see the difference is this is more over liter of a solution, this is more over kilogram of a solvent. So this uh, of a solution. So here the volume, and uh, there's a kilogram, and uh, so that's one difference. And also, when like a what is solvent uh, dilute solution have a similar number for the for the two m capital M little m. Uh, if your solution is very diluted, are very very similar the number very similar. But the concept is still different. Uh, the secondly, we we'll see molality does not vary with temperature. Uh, why? Because this little m is a molality. It has more on the top, more will not change with temperature. The mass also does not change with temperature, so therefore this uh, is, uh, so little m is uh, time independent. Uh, but this capital M is, okay? Uh, because this volume change um, with temperature, depending on time. So that's a big difference between the capital M, uh, the little m. So next we are going to see how you convert in those units. You pretty much follow the dimensional analysis technique from capital Y. For example, to convert between molality and molarity, you need to know the density of the solution. Um, I probably will not see uh, you all have some of the questions to do the conversion, really do the conversion. In the practice, you will see some of those examples, some of those questions. Uh, uh, but here I will just show you how you calculate uh, uh, molarity. If I give you the density and I give you how much uh, gram of the sample, and then this 
million gram of the calcium solution. So for this example, what you do, uh, you see you have this uh, density. So you first, you first want to find out what the more uh, of this calcium, um, because you want to find a molarity. By definition, molarity the more over liter of solution. So just solving one by one. So we see camera M equals more of C2 plus divided by liter of a solution. So to find out more of uh, calcium two plus, you just start with the given milligram of calcium two plus ion and do a few conversions. You first convert the milligram into gram. And then you will use molar mass of the calcium. Uh, so therefore, you will get how much moles of the calcium ion. Okay, uh, so let me see, are there any questions? So where did this come from? Where did the 40.08 from? The molar mass of calcium? Yeah, precisely, so that's from the periodic table. Okay, so next, we want to find out liter of solution. Okay, now this this much more in in how much in how much solution. One point three. Uh, you, yeah, you you one hundred gram of a solution. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then yeah. Uh, so you one hundred gram of solution, uh, you will need to find this liter of this amount of solution. So what you do, you will take one hundred gram of a solution, then you use density to find out milliliter than liter. So density give you is that. So that means you have 1.325 gram solution and one milliliter solution. So gram solution, gram solution kind of out. You get how much a milliliter, but you need to find out the liters. So after this, uh, calculation, you get 0 0.07547 liter solution. Okay, so now you know the moles of the calcium uh, ion, you know the liter of our solution. What you do, just take these two numbers divide, right? So molarity equals uh, more over liter of solution. So we find out more of the calcium ion 0 0.001672 divided by the liter of solution. We just find out so which is 0 0.07547. So that is more, and this is liter. So therefore, you get 0 0.022 capital M, and this is our answer B. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, so this is the click question. Um, it kind of review that the bleach problem. We, we, I changed the number to 12.7 by mass percent. Okay, so uh, take a screenshot or take a picture of this question. And I am going to go activate uh, this full question. Don't don't like the answer yet. The question not activated yet. 
Okay, so if you get it right, get if you get the right answer, B plus four point. So maybe strategy I will give you a more six or five points. Uh, if you get it wrong, you still get two points. Okay, just just take a picture of this uh, screen or something. And uh, let me go to activate uh, the question that you can answer. Okay, excuse me. Let me uh, get out of here. Okay, you can still see on my left side of the screen the question. Let me do active weight my uh, two questions. Okay, so this class is ready. Let's go to the next one. It's ready for us to submit now, right? Uh, just just one minute, one more minute. I have all I have three classes ready, so this is the last class. Depending on your last name, okay, just just one minute. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jira. Okay, so this will be the last one. Okay, all the classes are ready. And uh, just uh, let me magnify this.
Yeah. So next class, uh, I will have uh, one more critical question, and I'm going to give you more points if you get the answer right. How much time left do we have to answer this question? I'm still doing the math. Okay, doing the math. Uh, so uh, you have a spot like uh, six or seven minutes. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Welcome. Awesome. What we did is assuming 100 gram of damper. So starting from that, right? And starting by assuming you have 100 gram of damper. If you do that, that means you have 12.7 gram of NaOCl. Then you will have 100 minus, go ahead. Hmm? Question? No, I'm sorry. Okay. I just solved it. Okay. Yeah, so let me continue with um, my talking. So you assume 100 gram of example. After you assuming that, you have a 12.7 gram of NaOCl. Then, as Norman comments, you will have 100 minus 12.7 gram of water. So that's all important. So you have to know how much NaOCl you have, how much water you have.
Okay, uh, so I will see you next class. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Lisa. Bye, Norma. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Okay, bye. Question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, is the lab final tomorrow? Well, Dr. Wang, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're welcome. Bye. Yeah, if you, your uh, usual like lab schedule is tomorrow, then you will have a lab final uh, tomorrow. If your lab section starts at 11.30, so your uh, test will be starting at 11.30. Okay, and is it through Canvas? Yes, through Canvas. Okay, thank you. Have a great uh -huh. day. Okay, you too. Bye, Dr. Okay. Wang, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna give us the answer key for the study guide for chem lab? Um, no. no. Yeah. Uh, if you have some more question, I can uh, I can like uh, uh, we can we can uh, we can talk about that. Um, I yeah I so just tell you like uh, too, I I don't have the answer oh, I, to the yeah. Uh, I think I only have two questions. Like one student asked me about two questions. I have the answer for that two questions. Uh, how for the, how you calculate that uh, a uh, from the from that uh, activation energy and how you calculate uh, the what is that the cycle time for the other one? I have an mm -hmm. answer for that. If you need that, I can email you. Uh, yeah, because I don't know how to do like most of the questions. So. Oh, uh, if that is so, um, let me see. Probably our Prepare the answer like for the, I will just prepare those answer for for those calculations for those con conceptual like those uh, what is the uh, precision and what's the accuracy I cannot do the answer. Doctor, okay. okay, yeah. Uh, for the question, like mm -hmm. I think your answer is wrong because you said it's says answer D, but I got B, and I checked with my peers. For this I question, also for this question. Yeah. Oh, no, no, forget about that. They, they, they. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you got it right. You'll be okay. Um, I was wondering also, I had a question about when the lab final will be due. The lab final, you, you just, let's see, when is your usual uh, lab, uh, lab time? Friday? Um, Usual lab time is on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. So just uh, uh, what time your Wednesday uh, morning? Yeah, it's um. I think it starts at ten forty or eleven forty. Eleven forty. Eleven forty. Uh, so uh, you can see you go to the canvas, go to the quizzes, and you will see the the, the time uh, limit. Uh, I think uh, because some students require like a double time, so. I think for that 11.40 or 31, the test is available all the way until like 4.30 something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, so is it this week? Is it this week actually? Yeah, yeah, this week, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. it's tomorrow for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Wayne, have a good day. Bye, Danya. And I just want to ask about like the last one, you gave us that um, we can practice on it. Uh -huh. It's like the files. Yeah, is yeah. It, what else would the lab final include besides doing the Excel files? The level, level study guide. The level final study guide. Is that also in modules? Uh, I think, yeah, that's in the module. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that Excel file just, just for one question. Uh, so make sure you practice on that Excel file, know how to uh, do the dilution, how you prepare the solution, go through the Excel file, and then you click on measure the absorbance, so you will see the number for the absorbance. On the test day, like tomorrow, you, I will give you a new Excel file, and then you, the new Excel file is very similar as the old one, you just save it so you don't have those, uh, so much uh, audio, and the absorbance will be different. So you just practice how to use it to get the absorbance. Once you get the absorbance, you just using your calibration curve to find out the concentrations. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Thank you. Yeah, I'll check it. Thank you. Thank okay, you, Dr. Wang. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Alisa. We'll see you. See you around. See you around. Dr. Thank Wang, you. I had a question. Mm -hmm. Um, for the Excel file, I couldn't get the audios to work, and it wouldn't let me change any of the uh, things to get the absorbance. Juliana, right? Uh, huh. uh, probably later on, come to Zoom after like 11, 20 something, and uh, let me like see your screen, and let me see your setting. Um, right? Okay, yeah, that'll yeah. work. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Also had the same issue. Okay, yeah, just come. Uh, uh, so now probably test uh, after eleven thirty. Otherwise, okay. we're there. Yeah. Yeah, come to the office hour and and show me your screen. I can probably uh, help you on that. Doctor Wing, really yeah. good question. Um, when we type in the answer on our uh, text, do we have to type in leave or does it not matter? Copy your answer on the question. You mean on the text, you know, on, on the text, on the, on the kind words? No, no, no. So for the poll questions like this one, this extra oh, credit. Uh, yeah, yeah. When, we, when we text it in, do we have to type in leave after or does it not matter? Uh, I think it doesn't matter. You Probably just um, uh, for do either way, and then I email email me later. I will check. I will double check for you. See if what you get. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, goodbye everyone. I am going to uh, convert this uh, recording and post it on YouTube and also on cameras.